A couple of weeks ago, Sega made a live event for their mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog, on one of their YouTube channels under the same name to reveal news of their upcoming projects, content, and other Sonic-related stuff called Sonic Central, which they had a couple of times before as a birthday-slash-anniversary event for their blue mascot that they announced would be held from their Twitter account also under the same name. In this video, I'm going to recap everything that was revealed from this Sonic Central event and want to share my overall thoughts. Some positive, some negatives, so you know how I personally feel about it. First and most uninterestingly was the announcement of Sonic Origins Plus, a collection of all the old Sega Genesis 16-bit games, Sonic 1, 2, CD, 3 and Knuckles. And not only that, but this collection also included Amy Rose as a new playable character in every game from the classic Genesis quadrilogy. And as an addition to that, the game also includes collections of the Sonic Game Gear titles as a way to play these games, as well as giving the game a physical release. With all of that being said, you'd think this would be the greatest Sonic collection out there, wouldn't you? Well, Right. Time to explain my problem with this collection, and sort of rant slash vent my personal gripe against it. When this collection was first announced by Sega, it was titled Sonic Origins, and it wasn't a physical release of the classic games. No, it was all digital, meaning you have to purchase the game only digitally. Now, while I wasn't really a fan of that, I wasn't all that too bothered by it at first. The real issue started to arise when it was claimed that Sega was committing some underhanded and slimy business practices of making the first release of Origins have payment DLCs of features that should have been in the entire game from the start. Like music tracks of the classic games, character animations and camera controls to see and use in the main menu, heart missions, mirror mode, letterbox options, and 100 coins. Wow. As I said, all of this should have been stuff added in the game from the start. But then the other problem was the pricing. When it was originally released, the price for Origins was $29. Add that if you bought the DLC or Digital Deluxe Edition, that was an extra $10 of everything from the game, and as a whole, would have made the entire game $40! Oh, but that's not all! If you wanted to find alternative and cheaper means of playing the classic games and not pay that much money towards the greedy suits of Sega, well, you're completely out of luck, because as I stated before, Sega made an underhanded decision to remove any alternative means to buy the classic collection of the Genesis games. No, you know what? I'm underselling the underhanded nature of that. It was corporately, ruthlessly calculated! And then when the game finally released, it was shown to have many bugs, glitches, and being entirely unpolished for release. When Sega, you know, the multi-billion dollar gaming company, promised and assured us that they would focus more on quality control for Sonic releases. This was even confirmed by one of the developing teams of this game's collection, Simon Tomley, also known as Stealth, the man who runs his gaming company, Head Cannon Games, and was one of the developers that made Sonic Mania. If you want an honest, in-depth review of Sonic Origins, I recommend watching Jay's reviews, Pariah 696, The Curie Box 12, Terrari 5, and Telekinesis Man's video on Sonic Origins, down in the link in the description below. So that brings us to the now with Sonic Origins Plus. When that collection was announced, it was stated that it was going to be the same price of $40 as the Digital Deluxe Edition, which was already a bad sign. Then, not only that, but it was later revealed that if anyone purchased the original collection, you have to cough up another TEN EXTRA DOLLARS?! WHAT?! to get the Plus version as an expansion pack, making that a whole whopping $50! Sonic Origins plus 10 extra dollars! Man, Sega as a company is just so great! And if that wasn't bad enough, when the printed cover of the physical game was leaked online, it was revealed that the game's content needed to be downloaded from paper of what you bought. It wasn't all on the disc. As it should have been. That was the last straw for me personally, and I decided I wasn't going to buy Sonic Origins Plus. 
Add that with the leaked photos also showing the back of the cover stating that new character is being playable, as in plural, as if maybe other classic characters like Team Chaotix, Mighty and Ray, or even Metal Sonic were going to possibly be playable, when really I think it was just meant for Knuckles being playable in Sonic CD as DLC when that also should have been in the original game from the start. Oh, and changing then replacing some of the music from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, my favorite 2D classic Sonic game, with... This is a little bit of a nitpick maybe, but I'm guessing the reason for the music chain had most to do with it being made by Michael Jackson and his music crew. Yeah, he helped with making most of the music for this game, look it up. And I think Sega just didn't feel like wanting to pay licenses for those tunes, so we're stuck with what was given. That, along with emulation problems with the Game Gear titles. Like, fuck you, Sega, trying to make me seem like I'm stupid and being corporate assholes by butchering beloved classics. Now, I'll probably be met with some comments telling me that the Game Gear games weren't all entirely good, so why should that matter either way? Which, yeah, I can also agree with, but it matters because these are problems closely similar that Sega committed before! Anybody remembers how Sega released their remaster? Or, I guess I should call it the aster because it was ass, ass, of Sonic Colors Ultimate, and how we in the Sonic fanbase just hand-waved it off as, well, it's some bullshit, but at least it's not complete bullshit. Like, no! Just because something isn't as bad as another, doesn't mean it's still not bad or should be excused. Yes, I'm glad that some casuals or newcomers or kids will be introduced to this franchise and see how it all started, and I'm certain that they'll love it, but to me, all of these games, Genesis and Game Gear included, should have been handled better. <sighs> it's a shame too, because I would have bought this game, mostly the physical version, because of Amy being playable in the booklet that came with it, like Sonic Mania Plus, but it was ruined for me because of Sega's bad corporate business practices. Which, shocker, to me, that's nothing new with this company. And it just left a sour taste in my mouth from that. But if you want to buy Sonic Origins or Origins Plus, don't let me deter you from it. Please tell me how the game is overall in the comments below, and if the new stuff added entirely fixed the game. Next reveal was Sonic Frontiers update titled Sonic's Birthday Bash. Now, I don't have Sonic Frontiers, nor did I bought the game itself, mostly for my own reasons I can explain in a video of my own when I get to making and releasing it, but from what I've seen, I guess it does look somewhat interesting. I do think it's cool to see that Sonic Team finally added back the Spin Dash moveset, one of Sonic's most iconic moveset that I was surprised wasn't there from the first place, when that was Sonic's most defining trait that differentiated him from other gaming platformers. I mean, it mostly looks like the Sonic Lost World Spin Dash move mechanic. Which makes sense, I mean, Sega and Sonic Team basically reused the Sonic Lost World and Sonic Forces model, as well as some of its mechanics utilized in this game. They've added new challenges, new collectible Cocos, Sega's definitely not copycat version of Nintendo's Breath of the Wild Critters. Oh, never mind, Sonic Frontiers 
isn't similar to Breath of the Wild. Yeah, sure, and Sonic Lost World wasn't a Mario Galaxy ripoff clone. Whatever you tell yourself, Mr. Azuka. And a new game plus, all for free. I find this a little rich because Sega was only able to have all of this content for free, but upcharge everyone with Sonic Origins Digital Deluxe DLC and Sonic Origins plus 10 extra dollars. But they won't upcharge you with this new Frontiers DLC. Also, to give a little bit of my thoughts on the third and last DLC update for Frontiers, I do hope that Tails, Amy, and Knuckles, who will later be playable in the game, will play a little similarly to how they did in Sonic Adventure 1 slash 2, minus Amy, who was only playable in the multiplayer mode, which the only difference and improvement this sequel game made her sort of faster compared to how she was in Adventure 1. I wouldn't mind if they did that for her. This is a Sonic game after all, you know, the whole point of going fast and stuff. Or, either Sega and Sonic Team can take a little bit of notes from a couple of fan games on Sonic, with the characters being playable, like Sonic Project Hero or Sonic Encore, with using their own abilities and skills. Or, it'll be nothing like that, and we can end up with a Sonic Forces situation by just making the characters just a Sonic skin, or worse. That would be extremely disappointing, but maybe not that surprising considering this is the Sonic series after all being held by Sega. And as I'm sure everyone knows, they're not really too bright when it comes to decision makings for the Sonic franchise. They kind of make a reputation of us satisfying fans. So, maybe I should never get my expectations too high for this company. I do hope that this update, as well as the third, next, and last update for Frontiers will be fun, but I won't know because I'm not buying it. On to the next reveal, Sonic Prime. I've talked a lot about Sonic Prime before in my other previous videos, so I won't focus on this too much. All I can say from what I've seen of the trailer, I'm kind of interested to see where the story goes with Sonic and Shadow implied to be working together to fix Sonic's tremendous fuck up. Starting the trailer from where the episode ended with Shadow charging at Sonic and kind of justifiably decking him in the face a second time for causing an almost world ending catastrophe from the first episode, possibly killing almost all of his friends in the process. We are shown that they are left needing to find every piece of the prism shards to fix everything. We got to see all the alternate dimension version of the three main Sonic cast, Amy, Rouge, Tails, and Knuckles, who I'm still questioning why he's here with the crew and not guarding the Master Emerald, seemingly helping Sonic in his efforts to get the remaining shards of the Paradox Prism and put a stop to Discount Deadly 6 Eggman's evil reign. And then the trailer ends with the reveal of a new, or possibly familiar, robotic-like character that shares a lot of similar traits to a certain blue hedgehog. Hmm... Yeah, I think I'll stop playing Koi. This character looks weirdly like one of Sonic's arch-rivals, Metal Sonic. Or, is it Metal Sonic? I mean, it is blue, it has red eyes, and, well, it is a robot model somewhat after Sonic. I've heard some speculations that maybe this could be an alternate take on Metal Sonic, which I think could be interesting if the show made it serve as a complete polar opposite to Metal Sonic. And if so, it makes me wonder if we're going to see the Prime Metal, if you will, in this show later on, as some sort of flashback in the show. But if it isn't Metal, then who is this robotic Sonic? Who specifically made him? My good guess would have to be the Chaos Council, but we don't really know that yet. And is this character going to be a main threat for our heroes, or is he a friend? Another speculation I've heard is that this character is probably a somewhat alternate take on Sonic himself, which, you know what, I wouldn't mind more of, but I'm sort of split two ways about either or. On one hand, an alternate take on Metal Sonic would be kind of cool, 
cool, but on the other, it could run the risk of kind of bastardizing Metal Sonic's core as a character, trying to be superior to Sonic in every way. And then, with it being an alternate take on Sonic, could have some great death on one hand, giving this world another Sonic to help out, and lean more into other alternate takes of Sonic involving the multiverse in the future. But on another hand, it's just probably going to be Sonic but a jungle native, or Sonic but a pirate. You know, the generic multiverse Sonics. Again, we'll have to wait to find out. I would also like to talk about the character's design itself. A couple of fans liked it, a couple didn't. I'm sort of indifferent to it. I do kind of somewhat dig the design for this character, like half of its face and eyes being a visor-like head, and giving this robotic Sonic emoticon slash emoji to express itself. I kind of think that looks a little cool. Though, I can't say I like the stuff placed on his mouth and nose being removed. It kind of takes away some of his Sonic aesthetic look. And I don't know, I'm kind of mixed on the decision of making him run on foot like Sonic and not using his jet engine stomach to go faster from place to place, as shown from the end of the trailer with the two supposedly racing each other. Because on one hand, and I'm sort of repeating myself here, yeah, this show is differentiating this robotic Sonic to either Sonic or Metal Sonic, but on the other hand, like I've stated before, if this is supposed to be an alternate take on Metal, it does take away some of his core appeal and purpose, being the polar opposite to Sonic, with making it run on legs, just like him. But again, I and many others will have to wait and see. But, if there's anything else I could critique on Sonic Prime, it would have to be one little itty bitty last thing that, to me, kind of peeves me a bit. And that would have to be that THIS DID NOT NEED TO TAKE SO LONG TO GET MORE EPISODES! SWEET CHAOS CHRIST! If some of you watching are confused at my freakout, I'll explain why in this rant of mine's in a long-winded detail, again, so you can understand and see where I'm coming from. A couple of years back, when Sonic Prime was announced, it was informed to us that there would be 24 episodes in total for the show whenever it came to stream on Netflix, leaving a lot of people and fans including myself to believe those 24 episodes were the first season of the show. But before the show was close to release, it was stated that those 24 episodes would now be split into three seasons with a total of eight episodes each. This, to a lot of people, fans, and including myself, felt that this was completely stupid. Because this would do nothing but hinder hype and possibly lose a bit of audience's interest for the show. Which, yeah, seems to be the case. Oh yeah, eight episodes. That's definitely a whole season! Now, I don't think I will point the finger to completely blame Sega on this stupid decision, because it was revealed that this was more of corporate Netflix's doing, of dragging this show out so to probably keep people and fans following it, so they could possibly waste some of our time and get more of our money for their streaming service. And Netflix have been on a roll of being shown to have a track record of making awful decisions themselves that make SEGA look a little smart by comparison. So, I'll let you off the hook on this one, SEGA. Probably. For now. As for my further thoughts on Sonic Prime, I think the animation looks kind of great, more expressive, and energetic, as well as somewhat fluid. The environment, while I will say still looks plastic-like, can look a little nice at some points. The visual effects, like the blurry particle-like effects on the characters when they are fighting or moving look pleasing, including the Shatterverse. I would love to see a lot of other Sonic characters make an appearance on the show, including Silver, and especially Blaze, since the show is about the multiverse. Since I still feel like the show is not really quite a Sonic multiverse show, and that Sega are making the same mistakes with the Sonic franchise of just lazily trend chasing without putting that much thought or effort into what they're making, resulting in their stuff coming out either as sloppily mixed or mostly rushed, buggy, glitchy, and unpolished BULLSHIT. 
So I should at least expect her to have a role in Sonic's misadventures, like Blaze helping Sonic fix his multiverse as Shadow is, since she herself was implied to be Sonic's alternate dimension counterpart. And as for the voice acting of the characters, from specifically the episodes of the show I've watched, is probably, to me, almost the best interpretations we've gotten of the Sonic cast. Nothing flustered me, Sonic. Except when you're late. Well, almost. By the way, on the topic of voice acting, in one of my previous videos talking about Prime, I've talked about and praised most of the voice acting cast in Prime, but I've neglected to mention Eggman's voice actor, Brian Drummond, yeah, no relation to Ryan Drummond if you were going to ask, and his take on the evil scientist, which if you were curious of my thoughts on it, I thought he also sounded great, sort of replicating Mike Pollock's Eggman. <laughs> It worked. Without the power of that blue buffoon, we would have had to dig for months. Thank you for the earthquake, Sonic. And thank me for my plan, which went off spectacularly. And even though I already praised his voice acting already, I also thought that Ian Hanlon's take on the ultimate edgy the hedgy life form, Shadow, is mwah, magnificent. From a couple of episodes I've watched, his take on Shadow reminds me a lot of the previous voice actors, David Humphrey or a little bit of Jason Griffith, kind of similarly capturing some of their cadence. There you are. Chaos Control! <laughs> That's one. Three to go. And I will say, it's definitely a step up compared to... Saving the world. You... Don't make me laugh. You're weak. And you know what makes you weak? Your loyalty to your pathetic friend. Man, what the fuck is you what talking about? What the fuck was that? I'm sorry, man. No, 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 no. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's all I have to say on Sonic Prime. I'm interested in seeing how Man of Action will make the rest of the show's story play throughout the entire first season. Or, as I like to call it, Season 1, Part 2, and 3. And no, I'm not calling it Season 2 and 3, because they aren't, and they weren't planned to be. And also, I'm more interested in the story's playout, because it was stated that this show is... Canon with both the mainline games and possibly the IDW comic series! So I would like to see how it will make sense of all of this headache-inducing, convoluted, sweet, Mobius, holy chaos, shit! On to the next reveal, and that is Sonic Superstars, a new 2D Sonic game coming out later in the fall of 2023. I remember watching the first reveal of this game on the Summer Game Fest event that came out a month ago, and was filled with some genuine excitement. Though I was at first a little hesitant on the reveal of this game's, I'm guessing, first level. From what I saw, it almost reminded me of... Green Hill. Which, if you're a newcomer to Sonic, has been the most overused level for Sonic that Sega mostly relied on for mostly cheap nostalgia effect that they've now abused. But turns out, not really. It Kind of debatably, if you count recolored checkerboard pattern palm trees with green foliage islands surrounded everywhere as new or original. But outside of that, every gameplay footage is from what I've seen, like other new levels or zones, playable characters, Knuckles, Tails, as well as new addition Amy to the roster, along with expanding even more of Sonic's universe, with bringing back a long-forgotten character in the Sonic franchise, Fang the Sniper, which was the ultimate shock to me when I first watched the trailer revealing his comeback. He haven't made many appearances in any much of Sonic games besides Sonic the Fighter and a few cameo appearances in Sonic Generations, or his latest return a couple of years ago in Sonic Mania, but only as a mini-boss fight. I would dare say his most notable reoccurring appearances were in the Sonic the Hedgehog Archie comic series, but outside of that, in terms of his appearances in other Sonic-related media were slim to none. But now he's back, and seems like he'll be a troublemaker for both Sonic and his friends that you'll have to stop, along with Dr. Robotnik, who is also in this game. Which, I mean, of course, you can't do a Sonic game without involving the evil mad scientist. 
but turns out from some other footages that I've watched and research I did on the game, Dr. Robotnik and Fang aren't the only antagonists in this game. There's another villain, an additional character to the Sonic the Hedgehog cast, named Trip. Not much info was given on the character, but from some research I did, I found that the character is a girl, which, I mean, hey, awesome! I'm all for more female, female Sonic, Sonic characters. characters added to the cast, be it good or evil. The thing we do know about Trip is that she wears armory around her body, and that she was enlisted by both Fang and Robotnik to help guide and protect them in a new island because she is a possible native inhabitant of this new location that this game is taking place in called North Star Island. I do hope we get more info on the new region. From the footages of the trailer I've watched, it's shown that you can also use the Chaos Emerald's powers to use for different types of abilities as a bonus. I'm interested to see how this will be utilized in the game, seemingly kind of reminding me of something similar to the Wisp, but I'm sort of mixed on that. On one hand, I wouldn't mind seeing how these new abilities can work, but on the other hand, just like the Wisp, I hope they won't become a complete reliance for the entirety of the game in order to complete it, and forgetting the core appeal of Sonic's classic gameplay style. Sonic Superstars feels like something that could hold my interest and could be enjoyable or fun. They have one of the co-creators and character designer of Sonic, Naoto Oshima, helping out with this game. Along with his development team, Arzest, who worked on Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympics Games, Yoshi's New Island, and... Balan Wonderland. Yeah, they might not have the greatest track record, but I'm willing to give this game a chance. I don't even think this game will entirely be made by RZS. From some research I did, it does seem like Sonic Team will probably have some involvement on this game too. Guess we'll have to wait and see till the game releases. The look of Superstars give me some vibes of Naoto Oshima's vision of it, like he took some of his old concept art for the first Sonic Genesis game to rework it in this game. I also do like the in-game character models for the classic design. It does seem like Sonic Team are now updating the 3D classic Sonic design from Sonic Generations to use these character models as the norm, which I'm all down for. Though, I do hope the game will be completely polished and fun, and that they actually make the physics and momentum of the game accurate to the classic Genesis games and Mania. Sonic Generations physics was almost close to that, but was kind of nerfed. But not as much as compared to Sonic Forces. Again, I do hope that Sonic Superstars will be an enjoyable, fun time of recreating a classic Sonic feel, and hopefully won't be anything like... ...that game. I also would love to see if more will be added to the game in the future. Like, making Fang playable as a future DLC bonus? Without needing to charge more money. Yes, I'm still going to hamper on that because that still is some bullshit. Sega has this game being sold for $59. I have a right to demand better and should expect a lot better from this company selling a game at full price like that. Anywho... I would also like Fang to control similarly to how he is in this Sonic fan game, Sonic Galactic, which I played a couple of times, and I loved how Fang played in that game. Heck, maybe do the same for Trip if possible. Either way, I'm definitely looking forward to Sonic Superstars, and I'll definitely be buying this over Sonic Origins plus 10 extra dollars. And... That was pretty much it. That was all that was revealed for this Sonic Central event. Well, okay, that's not entirely true. There were some other reveals for Sonic Central that, to me, really weren't needed for this whole Sonic Central. Like, crossover event with Roblox on Sonic Speed Simulator, which, to me, is as good as 3D Sonic has been. Sonic Dash event with Sonic Prime, which is nothing but just the same Temple Run mobile Sonic game, but with Sonic Prime character skins. And eventually, we'll have a Super Silver skin to play as in both Sonic Dash and Sonic Forces Speed Battle, which 
speed battle is just Sonic Dash 2.0, and involving anything Sonic Forces related speaks volumes to me of what this central offered. Ain't Sonic in the Black Knight Dragon Hunter Lancelot! Which, I mean, cool, but really, who cares? Crossover with Zombie de Amigo, another one of Sega's long forgotten franchises that they're now doing something with. That's kind of great. Merch, comics, and crossover with Lego. The hype is real. This whole Sonic Central felt like almost nothing but just crossovers and merch. Nothing really noteworthy to talk about. The only two things of this Central of some worth to mention to me would be the Sonic Symphony concert, where they will hold a world tour event. I loved the first Sonic Symphony when it was shown online, so I'll definitely be looking forward to this one when it comes to my location. And the last somewhat worthy thing to mention is Tails Tube, a YouTube sort of VTubing web series on the main Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel that involves the two-tailed genius Fox, Tails, and giving a lot of Sonic lore dump onto casuals or newcomers, like factoids on the series. This is interesting, because Sonic lore throughout every media, be it games, shows, comics, or movies, have been mostly inconsistent throughout the years. So I would love to see how this web series tries to make sense of all of this mess of the franchise Sega created. But yeah, that's about it on this Sonic Central. Nothing really of note to talk about, but even some of the things revealed were stuff we already known about. I would have at least expected more news on the Knuckles the Echidna series coming out on Paramount+. Plus. No, it's only mentioned by name on this central event. But, even if they did show it, I don't think it would be that interesting. Reading from the plot synopsis for this series, it states that The new live-action series will follow Knuckles on a hilarious and action act journey of self-discovery as he agrees to train Wade as his protege and teach him the ways of the Enchidna Warrior. Yeah, from the sounds of this series, it seems like it doesn't want to take anything from the Sonic games and just be one of corporate Paramount's nonsense. Which I think I'll also do a video on talking about both Sonic movies as some sort of retrospective look back later on. But anyhow, like, wow, yeah, who wants Sonic X, the sequel, but with Knuckles? Wow, this definitely will capture fans and audiences' attention. Incredible! Like, this whole entire Sonic Central event just, to me, felt like... Hi! We're the corporate stooges that constantly run the Sonic franchise into the ground. And to celebrate this, how the fuck is this franchise still around despite our numerous fuck-ups and gaming company not bankrupt history? We decided to celebrate this Sonic anniversary with stuff you already know about. Yes, we like to drag a lot of you poor Sonic saps that'll say yes to everything with the blue rat's face on it. Like Sonic Origins plus 10 extra dollars! No, I'm not letting that go. Copy-paste Lost World and Forces, but Breath of the Wild creative bankruptcy update. Sonic the Trend Chasing Multiverse Hog, but not really involving the Sonic Multiverse. And new 2D classic Sonic game that seems like it's being made with care, with one of its co-creators involved. Yes, and also, merch, 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 Roblox, merch, merch, and Lego. Truly, the future of Sonic could not look any brighter with a lot of the content we have to offer. And if anyone says so differently and questions our integrity, shut the fuck up and buy product so we can drag out this franchise along with you suckers with it by wasting and padding out time of our bullshit. Oh, how I love padding filler and giving out some bullshit. Yes. Well, join us next time on Sonic X, I mean the Book of Mormon, I mean Sonic Central, to consume more product. Oh, and our Sonic Movie 3 and Knuckles series crap is coming. Bye! <laughs>And also, no offense to the actor Adam Pally, I'm certain he's a nice guy, but what Sonic fan will want to focus on a human character instead of the iconic characters we know and love over another Chris Thorndike 2.0? Eh, maybe besides some clickbait over-the-top hype men content farming Sonic channels. What's 
up guys, Sonic the Hype Guy here, and today we're here for another unnecessarily long hyped up speculated Sonic news video. And after all of my other previous attention grabbing Sonic sensationalized bullshit did bizarrely well, like rumor slash speculation, Sega just leaked Sonic nudes? Definitely video news worthy. Not. Sonic hype news that made me cover my arm and click make the thumbnail so hard. And Sega revealed Sonic hype news that made me soy jack clickbait the thumbnail so hard. Original title, I know. Why? Static up his ass! Red circle, bloody red arrow, and money shot reaction! Uh. I'm here to find out an overhyped new leaked info on a new Sonic game possibly coming out in 500 million thousand thirty-one. So it's obviously gotta be true. So let's check out what this new Sonic game is called, so I can hype it and all of you up for inevitable disappointment. Like my father did when he left me when he said he was going out to the groceries for milk, but never came back. Alright. WHOA! Oh my god! Oh my god! Guys, we got the title of the new Sonic game here! SONIC BLUE! BALLS! My body is ready. What up, Sonic Squad? It's the Sonic Doge here. And today, we're going to be looking into some really awesome Sonic Bomb news today. Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. And this Sonic news will be almost as bomb as the dub I took on the toilet last week. Now, be aware guys, the Sonic news I'm about to reveal, I've gotten from a trusted source leaker, who goes by the name of, My Ass. That's right, My Ass is so tight on great Sonic leaks, My Ass comes out with steaming hot Sonic news, and My Ass will also make sure to wipe itself clean from misinformation for reassurance of top Sonic quality info. And if you want all of that nice, sweet, long, drawn out, clickbaity, overhyped, sensationalized, garbage, I mean quality Sonic info news, then subscribe. Hit that bell notification, comment, and like for engagement of more of my Sonic bullshit. Goods. Goods is what I meant to say. So, without further ado, we're about to get into what this new Sonic game will be. Let's, Let's go. go! Sonic Ass Venture 3? The Sonic game where Sonic is... Doing your mom? What's up, guys? Generic Sonic Content Farmer! What, 5,372? Here! And today, I'm going to be rambling, hyping up my next Sonic attention grabbing clickbait video for your short attention span. You see, the Sonic is Sonic, and the Sonic News is news hype that I'm hyped up for, that the hype is so real. Sonic News! Sonic News! Sonic News! Sonic News! Hype is so real! Sonic News! The Sonic is so Sonic, and the Sonic I love the Sonic because the Sonic Sonic sucks! Fuck him! Insert propped up Sonic hype. So yeah, overall I found this Sonic Central disappointing, or just mediocre as a whole. Just kind of like the previous one that came out last year, if you're kind of curious of my thoughts on that one. It just felt like a whole bunch of filler of buy our product and nothing else of substance. But that's just me. Tell me what the rest of you thought about this Sonic Central, as well as about how you felt about my thoughts and video on it below in the comments section. And moral of this video is, Illuminations and Nintendo Super Mario Bros. movie completely ass-clapped Sega's and Paramount Sonic movie series. All I got to say is, Sonic Movie 3 better live up to its expectations. We definitely know what we're doing with this franchise, guys! 